So that kind of brings us to our next topic, which is who this session is for. So the way I'm thinking about this session is that it's for beginners who are starting to move into intermediate scripting, right? Those who understand some C-sharp basics, maybe you've done Rollaball on the Unity website, or you've done Space Shooter or some of our other tutorials there, uh, but you have not delved deeply into language features like data collections, like lists or dictionaries, or using inheritance or object-oriented concepts like abstract classes and functions, or overriding functions. This is also appropriate for users interested in learning about scriptable objects in a beginner-friendly context, and for people who want to make a text adventure game in Unity. So, what is a text adventure? The genre started with Colossal Cave Adventure, created by Will Crowther in 1976, which was then expanded upon by Don Woods and other programmers. It's the earliest version of interactive fiction where gameplay and exploration take place through reading and typing words. Uh, and for more info, I really recommend, uh, there's this documentary called Get Lamp, uh, which is all about the early days of text adventures. And many of the people who worked on the sort of popular ones back then are interviewed in it. And it's kind of interesting, just as like some early history of video games stuff, uh, if that is the kind of thing that you're interested in. So let's take a look at the completed project and some of the architecture that we're going to create before we go on. So what we've got here is in our folder, we've got a folder of input actions, which are actually, let's look first at rooms. So we have a folder of rooms and let's look at our start room. So each of these is what's called a scriptable object. And we're gonna learn more about scriptable objects over the course of the lesson. We've used them in some previous live trainings, but I'm hoping I can give people a gentle and easy to understand introduction to them here. Uh, and so we have a starting room. That's the first room that we enter. And it has a couple of fields. It has a field for the description. There's a name for the room, which we can use to check against if we're trying to solve puzzles. And then we have an array of exits. In this case, we only have one, which is to the north. So this is the key string. This is what's going to be typed. This is what it'll respond to when typed. And then there's a description of the exit. And that links us to another scriptable object, which is the orb room, right? If we highlight the orb room, we see the description, a description of the exits, and then a list of any interactable objects in the room. So if we look at, for example, one of our items, the skull, which is one of these interactable objects, we see that it has a description. It has a noun, right, which is basically its keyword. And then there's a couple of actions which are called input actions that can be taken with it. Examine, take, or use, and those either display some text or in this case, call an action response which executes some further code. Each of these input actions are also scriptable objects. So they're assets which contain some code which we're gonna to use to execute a function. So if we look at, for example, go, which we're gonna be creating today, all we see here is a keyword but if we highlight the Go script, we'll see that there's actually a bit of code that is contained in that object and that's going to be executed uh, at the appropriate time. So this is kind of the, the architecture, the structure that we're going to be learning in addition uh, to the, the text adventure content here. And this is how we're going to build our text adventure.